In this video, we're going to learn how to make a transparent Unity app. The background of our Unity window will be transparent, allowing us to see what's behind it. This is great for many scenarios, like making a annotation app, or a virtual assistant, or some particles following the mouse, or just a simple desktop overlay. Let's begin! This video is sponsored by AudioMob. AudioMob helps developers monetize their games through non-interrupting audio ads. You can earn more money while having happier players. So, instead of intrusive video ads that take up your entire screen, you have audio ads playing in the background whilst the player is enjoying your game. So the player continues having fun while the audio ad plays in the background. You can monetize using standard audio ads that allow the user to skip the advert at any time, or you also have the rewarded type which allows your player to get rewards by listening to an ad. Players don't enjoy having their games logged, so it's quite possible that this new unintrusive ad type will become the new standard in the future. It's very easy to integrate into your games via their Unity plugin. Click the link in the description to learn more and start monetizing your games through non-intrusive advertising. Clicking the link also helps support the channel. Okay, so here let's learn how to make a transparent Unity app. Now, I first researched this a while ago because I had a really interesting idea. And if you saw the Game Dev Reacts video, then you already saw what that is. I wanted to be able to write some annotations on top of the video as I explained what was happening. So I first went looking for normal annotation apps, but I couldn't really find anything decent, so eventually I started researching if it could be done with Unity and made my own. Alright, so here is the simplest thing. I just have a cube moving around and it's on top of the desktop. So the background of this Unity app is transparent, which lets me see the windows behind it. So I can interact, switch to this one, switch to this one, there you go. Here is another simple example, just some particles being spawned and following the mouse. And finally, here it is another possible use case, just a simple virtual assistant. So I can click on this button, and there you go, he tells a very nice joke. He's just standing there playing a normal animation on top of my desktop, so I can switch windows, and there you go, he's always there. So note how if I click through it, there you go, the window app is running on top of everything else, and the important thing is that it's fully transparent. So I'm interacting with what's behind it, there you go, just like this. And I can also define areas to receive clicks, so for example this button, I click on it, and there you go, he tells a nice joke. So the important thing is that we're running Unity on top of the desktop. So whatever you can do with Unity, you can do it exactly like this. So you can make a really complex virtual assistant, maybe to notify you when you receive an email or remind you of certain things, or you can play around and build one of those destroy your desktop games. So it's a really cool thing that greatly expands what you can build with Unity. I have also included links in the description to all the results that I found during my research, so if you want to dig deeper, you can check those out. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Alright, so this is our goal, let's get to it! Okay, so here we are in our starting scene. It's completely empty. All I have is this cube here, just moving and rotating around. So here in the editor, everything is pretty much normal. Let's start off by making the script to run our code. So we create a new C Sharp script. Call this our transparent window. Let's make a game object. And add our script, okay. Now, in order to make this effect, it's actually very simple, but also slightly complex meaning it's just a few lines of code, but it does involve working directly with the Windows API. We need to tell the Windows API what settings to use for our Unity window. Now, the way that we can interact with an external API is by first adding the attribute DLL import. Now, this attribute lives inside using system.runtime.interruptServices. This attribute says that we're going to grab a function from an external library. So in this case, we want to grab it from user32.dll. And then from this library, we want to grab this function. And this function requires an int pointer, which lives inside using system. All right, so this is how we can access functions from external libraries like the various Windows APIs. And through this function, we can show a standard Windows message box. So for testing, let's do down here a simple void start. And on start, let's just test it. Now, the first argument is for the handle of the window. So let's pass in just a zero pointer. Then we have some text. Then a caption. And finally, the type, so let's use the default. All right, so let's test. 
And yep, right away we see a standard Windows message box showing up. It has our text, our caption, and a simple OK button. All right, awesome. So this is how we interact with the Windows API. First, we import from a specific DLL, grab a specific function, and then we simply use it. Now, I'm not an expert on the Windows API, but by using the various libraries, you can build just about anything. There is this great website called pinvoke.net. This one shows all the functions in all of the various Windows APIs. So it's a massive wiki. It also shows C-sharp examples for a lot of the functions. So this is extremely useful for learning how to use the Windows API and what each parameter requires. Okay, so let's go back to our goal to making the background transparent. Now, in order to do that, there are several possible methods. Again, you can check the links in the description, which are the results of my research, and several people found multiple methods. Here, I will showcase the method that achieved the result that I wanted. So first, we're going to need a function. Here it is. It's a function from the DWM API. This one allows us to set the window margins. So down here on start, we can use this function. Now, the first parameter is the handle for the window. So that means we also need a function to get the handle for this window. So here it is from user32, we get the get active window. So down here, we get the handle for this window and we use it in this function. And now we need our margins. And here, according to the documentation, if we give it a negative number, then we get a sheet of glass effect making our background transparent. So just like this, create our margins with minus one and we pass it in and call this function. So that's it, that's pretty much the bare minimum that we need. However, here, if we try running it in the editor, and nope, nothing works yet. So in order for this effect to work, we need to make a proper build instead of running it in the editor. So for that, let's go into file, open up the build settings. Now, first we add our open scenes onto our build. Then in here, everything is correct. Let's just open the player settings. And now here we have an important option that we need to change. Down here on the resolution tab, we have this option here to use the flip model swap chain. So it's this one that we need to disable in order for this effect to actually work. So we do that and then over here on our full screen mode, we also need to make sure that we are in full screen window and we're also using the built-in render pipeline. And lastly, we just need to go to our camera. Here it is my main camera and just set the background color to black with zero alpha. All right, so that's it. All of these settings are very important. So we need this checkbox to be unticked. It needs to be in full screen and the camera needs to be black with no alpha. Now with all of that, we can try clicking on build and run. And yep, there's our Unity app with a completely transparent background. Awesome. So we have our Unity build and it's running on top of the desktop. So there it is, exactly like that. And as you can see, this was actually very simple. All we needed was pretty much just this line of code and everything is working. Now, everything else that we want to do is simply expanding upon this concept. For example, over here, I have this simple particle effect. It follows the mouse and drops particles. Now let's run this as a build. And yep, there it is. We have the mouse with the visible desktop behind it and the particles looking nice following it. Now there's still one very important thing. Right now this works. We have all of our visuals on top of the desktop. So we have our transparent Unity window. However, even though it's transparent, it's still capturing the mouse. So as I click, nope, I cannot interact with what's behind it. So let's make that happen. Now, in order to do that, we're going to need another function. So here it is from user 32dll the set window log. So this lets us set attributes for a window. You can view all of the possible attributes in the Windows documentation. So down here, let's call this function. We pass in our window handle. Then we want the type that we're going to change. We want to change the extended style. So instead of using magic numbers, I'm going to add a constant up here. And we use this, okay. And now we set the new flags. Now to make it click through, we need two. So we need these two, make it layered and transparent. And we use them down here. Now these are flags, so in order to add both of them, we add one, then the bitwise or operator, and then the second. I covered bitmasks and bitwise operators in another video if you want to learn more. So we apply these two and now our window should be click through. Let's build and test. Okay, so here is our window running on top and as I click behind it, yep, now I'm actually interacting with this window. So our app is now click through. Awesome. Now, one very important thing here, which is if we run this code whilst in the editor, then everything will end up being messed up. 
So here, instead of making a bill, let's say I just click on play, and yep, everything is completely broken. So it's broken on top, and as I click, yep, the clicks go through. So the editor is now broken. To solve this, I need to restart Unity. Okay, back to normal. So as we saw, this causes some pretty serious issues if we run it in the editor. So in order to prevent that, over here we can add an if. So this code will only run if we are not on the Unity editor. So this helps prevent that issue from happening. All right, so here we have our transparent window, which is acting as a click through. Now the next issue is it doesn't stay on top. So as I click, yep, Unity comes to the foreground and this one goes to the background. All right, so let's fix that. For that, we need another function. So another one from user32, this one is set window pause. Now down here, we're going to call it, pass in the window handle. And for the insert after, we need another constant. So we have a constant for the topmost and we use it in here and zero on the rest. All right, so just with this line, let's test. So here we are and click. And yep, the click went through and I'm now interacting with the window behind it, but the transparent app is still on top. All right, so far so good. Now we see another issue. The issue is that the build is not running when it's in the background. So only when it comes in here, doesn't work. And down there, it's still visible, but it's not running. So we can fix that very easily. Down here, we go into our build settings, into our player settings, and we simply tick this box to run in background. Now, alternatively, we can also do it through code by setting application.run in background to true. So let's test. All right, so it's on the foreground. As I click, yep, there you go. It's still running, but I'm now interacting with the background. All right, awesome. So here we have a transparent Unity window running on top of our desktop. So it's running on top of the Unity window, and now it's running on top of the Visual Studio, and so on. Now, finally, if we want to make it transparent, but also interactable, we have two methods. One is just based on pixels, and one is based on manual logic. Now, the simplest one is based on pixels. For that, we need a new function. Here it is, we set the layered window attributes. Then we also need another constant. So here it is. And now down here, instead of set window long passing in these two, we only make it layered, we do not add the transparent. And then we call our set layered window attributes in order to access this window. Now we have a field for the chroma key, a field for the alpha, and a field for the flags, which is our color key flag. All right, so that's it. Essentially, we're telling everything with a color of zero, so completely black with zero alpha will become click through and everything not will become clickable. So let's test. All right, so just for testing, I add the new sprite with some alpha fade. We'll see why in a bit, so let's build. Okay, so here's our transparent window running on top. Now, if I click on the transparent part, yep, there you go, now the window behind it is in focus. However, now if I click on the solid part, yep, there you go, now this one is the one that's actually active, so the clicks are not going through behind. Now, let me just add some button behavior. All right, so here I made a simple button. It's using the button sprite script from the utilities, which as always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. All I did was just add some behavior to change the color on the mouse over. So as the mouse passes, it will change color. Let's test. All right, so here's the button down here. And as you can see, as I pass the mouse over, yep, it's interacting with the button. Now I click on the transparent and I'm clicking on the window behind it. But now if I click on the button, yep, now this one is active. All right, so like this, you can see how it works very easily between the transparent click through and the solid does not click through. However, here this sprite has a fading alpha and now you see the issue with this approach. Now, in order to capture clicks, it makes each pixel either fully transparent or fully opaque. So it does not deal well with alpha fades. Now, the other approach is simply extending upon what we learned previously. So we know how to make the window click through and not. All we need to do is apply some logic to it. So let's go back into the other method. So for that, we comment out this function call and in here we add our transparent flag. And yep, there it is, everything is click through. And right now you can also see the difference between the two methods. So this one, the alpha is actually correct, so it's slowly fading away. So with this method, I'm just going to add some simple code. So here it is, just add an update and a simple function to set the click through. Now we just need to make our window handle an actual field. Okay, we make it a member field, we set it in here, and then we use it in here. And there you go, it's extremely simple. 
we're just either adding the transparent or click through or we're taking it away. And we're using the physics in order to test if there's a collider beneath the mouse position. And if so, then it becomes not click through. And if there isn't anything and it's transparent, then it becomes click through. So very simple. Now, if we run this, here we are. And if I click on the transparent part, yep, there you go. I'm interacting with the one behind it. However, if I click on top of a collider, so here on the button, I click, and there you go, now this window is active. So click on transparent and goes through, click on the button and it captures on the button. Now the benefit of this approach is that the alpha phase work, and you can also more specifically define what is clickable and unclickable. So in here it's perfectly solid, but I can click and the clicks go through it. Over here is an example of all of this put together. So it's my virtual assistant. I can click through the character and interact with the objects behind it. And I can click on this button to interact with it, and there you go, he tells a nice joke. So here is everything put into action, making an actual, popular, interesting thing. So if you'd like to build an assistant that tells you corny jokes throughout the day, there you go, here's how you do it. So now that you know this, go ahead and make something awesome. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. Also, don't forget to check out AudioMob to monetize your games and earn more money while keeping happier players. Clicking the link also helps support the channel. Check out the CodeMonkey app on Steam. Interactive tutorials, complete games, and more. Click the link in the description and add it to your wishlist. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the Project Files and Utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions or comments, and I'll see you next time.